the truth of genetic differences, no matter what, the, the, between groups is, is a painful, harmful, potentially, potentially dangerous thing. This, let me ask you to this question, whether it's bell curve or any research on race differences, can that be used to increase the amount of racism in the world? Can that be used to increase the amount of hate in the world? Do you think about this kind of stuff? I've thought about this a lot, not as a scientist, but as a person. Um, and my sense is there is such enormous reservoirs of hate and racism that have nothing to do with scientific knowledge of the data that speak against that, that no, I, I don't, I don't want to give racist groups a veto power over what scientists study. If you think that the differences, and by the way, virtually no one disagrees that there are differences in, in scores. It's all about what causes them and how to fix it. So if you think this is a cultural problem, then you must ask the problem, what do you want to, do you want to change anything about the culture? Or are you okay with the culture because you don't feel it's appropriate to change a person's culture? So are you okay with that? And the fact that that may lead to disadvantages in, in school achievement. It's a question. Are, if you think it's environmental, what are the environmental parameters that can be fixed? I'll tell you one, lead in, you know, lead from gasoline in the atmosphere, lead in paint, lead in, in water. That's an environmental toxin that society has the means to eliminate, and they should. Yeah, just to sort of trying to find some uh, insight and conclusion to this very difficult topic. Uh, is there been research on environment versus genetics, nature versus nurture on this question of race differences? There is the not, curve? no one wants to do this research. It, it, first of all, it's hard research to do. Second of all, it's it's a minefield. No one wants to spend their career on it. Tenured people don't want to do it, let alone students. Um, the way I talk about it, I, I be, well, before I tell you the way I, I talk about it, I want to say one more thing about Jensen. He was once asked by a journalist straight out, are you a racist? His answer was very interesting. His answer was, I've thought about that a lot, and I've concluded it doesn't matter. This, now, I, I know what he meant by this. The guts to say that, wow. He was a very unusual person. I think he had yeah. a touch of Asperger's syndrome, to tell you the truth, because yeah. I, I saw him in many circumstances. He would and, be canceled on Twitter immediately well, with that sentence. Yeah, but what he, <laughs> what he meant was he had a hypothesis. Yeah. And with respect to group differences, he called it the default hypothesis. He said, whatever factors affect individual intelligence are likely the same factors that affect group differences. It was the default, but it's, yeah. it was a hypothesis. It should be tested. And if it turned out empirical tests didn't support the hypothesis, he was happy to move on to something else. He was absolutely committed to that scientific ideal that, that it's an empirical question. We should look at it. And let's see what happens. The scientific method cannot be racist from his perspective. It doesn't matter what the scientists, if they, if they follow the scientific method, it doesn't matter what they believe. And if they are biased and they consciously or unconsciously bias the data, other people will come along to yes. replicate it. They will fail. And the process over time will work. So let me push back on this idea because psychology to me is full of gray areas. And what I've observed about psychology, even replication crisis aside, is that something about the media, something about journalism, something about the, the virality of ideas in the public sphere, they misinterpret they take up things from studies, 
uh, willfully or from ignorance misinterpret findings and tell narratives around that. I personally believe, for me, I'm not saying that broadly about science, but for me, it's my responsibility to anticipate the ways in which findings will be misinterpreted. So I've had, I thought about this a lot because I published papers on uh, semi autonomous vehicles and uh, those, you know, cars, people die in cars. There's people that have written me letters saying, emails, nobody writes letters, <laughs> I wish they did, uh, that I have blood in my hands because of things that I would say, positive or negative, there's consequences. In the same way, when you're a researcher of intelligence, I'm sure you might get emails or at least people might believe that a finding of your study uh, is going to be used by a large number of people to increase the amount of hate in the world. I think there's some responsibility on scientists, but for me, I think there's a great responsibility uh, to anticipate the ways things will be misinterpreted. And there you have to, first of all, decide whether you want to say a thing at all, or do the study at all, publish the study at all, and to the words with which you explain it. See, it's, uh, I find this on Twitter a lot actually, which is when I, when I write a tweet, and I'm usually just doing so innocently, I, I'll, 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 I'll write it, you know, it takes me like five seconds to write it or whatever, 30 seconds to write it. And then I'll think, all right, I like close my eyes open and try to see how will the world interpret this? Like, what are the ways in which this will be misinterpreted? And I'll sometimes adjust that tweet to see like, yeah, so in my mind it's clear, but that's because it's my mind from which this tweet came. But you have to think in a fresh mind that sees this um, and it's spread across a large number of other minds, how will the interpretation morph? I mean, for a tweet, it's a silly thing, it doesn't matter, but for a scientific um, paper and study and finding, I think it matters. So I don't know, I don't know what your thoughts are about on that. Because maybe for Jensen, uh, the data is there, what do you want me to do? This is a scientific process has been carried out, if you think the data was polluted by bias, do other studies that reveal the bias, uh, but the data is there. And we, like, I have, what, I'm not a poet, I'm not a uh, literary writer, like what do you want me to do? I'm just presenting you the data. What do you think on that spectrum? What's the role of a scientist? The reason I do podcasts, yeah. the reason I write books for the public, is to explain what I think the data mean and what I think the data don't mean. I don't do very much on Twitter other than to retweet uh, references to papers. Yes. I don't think it's my role to explain these because they're complicated, they're nuanced. But when you decide not to do a scientific study because you're, or not to publish a result because you're afraid the result could be could be harmful or insensitive. That's not an unreasonable thought. And people will make different conclusions and decisions about that. I wrote about this. I wrote, uh, I, I'm the editor of a journal called Intelligence, which, publish, which publishes scientific papers. Sometimes we publish papers on group differences. Those papers sometimes are controversial. These papers are written for a scientific audience. They're not written for the Twitter audience. So I don't promote them very much on, on, on Twitter. Um, but in a scientific paper, you have to now choose your words carefully also because those papers are picked up uh, by non-scientists, by writers of various kinds. And you have to be available to discuss what you're saying and what you're not saying. Sometimes you are successful at having a, a good conversation, like we are today, that's, that doesn't start out pejorative. Other times I've been asked to participate in debates where my role would be to justify race science. Well, you can see 
you start out, you know, and that was a BBC request that I had, that I received. I have so much, it's a love-hate relationship, mostly hate with these shallow journal, uh, journalism organizations. So they would want to use you as a kind of in a debate setting to communicate as to like there is raised differences between groups and make that into debate. Yes. And put you in a role of... Um, justifying racism. Justifying That's racism. That's what they're asking me to do. Versus like educating about this this field of the science of intelligence, yeah. I, I wanna say one more thing before we get off the, the, the normal distribution. You also asked me, what is the science after the bell curve? And the short answer is there's not much new work, but whatever work there is supports the idea that there still are group differences. It's arguable whether those differences have diminished at all or not. And there is still a major problem in underperformance in, for school achievement. For many uh, mis disadvantaged and minority students, and there so far is no way to fix it.